You're live. I'm live. Hello, everybody. Good morning from the Fluffatorium studio in Corking, Dorking. How are we? How is everyone? It's quite warm here in the UK. We have currently got 26 degrees outside. I'd say it was a fair bit warmer than that in here, wouldn't you, Chris? Yes. I was hoping, actually, that Chris might get one of those big things that you have somebody wave at you to keep you cool, you know, so that when he's not cutting between shots, he could have fanned me. That's the word. A fan. <laughs> Large fan. I don't mean a fan. I mean a... All Mind you, you want is fans, isn't it? You're all about the fans. Yes. Although, obviously, we do have an electric fan, but if we had that on, firstly, I'd look like I was in Titanic, but also it might make quite a lot of noise. And that would, that would um, make Chris upset. That would mess with my gate. Oh, don't even start about the gate. Anyway, that's the gate is when it clips the sound so you can't hear the cars going past. OMG. Right, we're here to do punch needle, okay? So I'm going to show you how to go about it if you've never done it before. I'm currently doing a make along, which I'm uh, talking about quite a lot on Instagram, on Instagram stories, and I've made an Instagram stories highlight of all of the things that I've done so far. So if you're interested in making this cushion, it's a polka dot cushion. If you could just quickly flip over to the overhead uh, camera, Chris. Um, this is the cushion that I'm making on the, am I in the right place for Insta? Yeah, I think I am. This is the cushion that I'm making. Okay, here it is again. It's a very simple polka dot cushion in two colours. As you can see with what's laid out behind here, I'm making it slightly different colours because I had to have pink rather than black. Uh, but, back to me. But, this is the human vision mixer. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's what I'm making. So if you've never done it before, I'm going to start things right from the very beginning, but I'm also going to be talking about this cushion that I'm making quite a lot. Okay, so firstly, what is punch needle? It, uh, it's basically punching a tool in and out of a special fabric called monk's cloth. Do not ask me why it's called monk's cloth. Did we look this up actually? I can't why is remember. it called monk's cloth? I can't remember. I don't, or, monks or I don't made know. The cloth? No, 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 no. It's very similar to Airtex shirts. I don't know if in the UK we used to wear Airtex shirts when we were doing PE at school. Anyway, it's a bit like that. But but it's very clever, the monk's cloth, because it the fabric holds the, the, the yarn that you're punching in and out of it so it stays put. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, so you can also use a hessian. You can do it into a cotton fabric as well. Um, if the if the weave of the fabric is quite tight, it will hold the yarn in place. But what's clever about the monk's cloth is it's got a bit of stretch to it. So as you punch in and out, it holds. And I'll show you that as, as I'm doing it a bit later on. So I'm working into monk's cloth. I'm working on our giant 45 centimetre, hang on, let me move this out of the way for a second, frame, which looks like this, okay. This is the biggest one. We do also have slightly smaller versions. We have the 30 centimetre and a 20 centimetre one as well. Um, the great thing about these frames is that you can drawing pin your fabric to the monk's cloth to it to make it nice and taut to work onto. But in the past, I have worked onto, uh, onto the cloth using embroidery hoops as well. So that's another option. Okay. Then what else am I using? I'm using a pattern in this instance, which comes from our punch needle book called Loco Loco. I'll talk to you about that in a few minutes as well. But basically the patterns are all in the back and I pulled it out and I transferred it onto the monk's cloth very easily using a pen. Um, and then I'm using some yarn. Obviously, you can use whichever yarn you like. I happen to be using our West Yorkshire Spinners Blue Face Leicester 100% wool. Now, I've done it quite a bit, the punch needle, with acrylic, and it works fine with acrylic, but I just wanted to see, I wanted something a bit more pucker, you know, and a bit more proper and a bit nicer. There's nothing wrong with acrylic yarn, and obviously it's a, a cheaper option if you're trying something for the first time. But I'm using the West Yorkshire Spinners Blue Face Leicester. It's in our sale at the moment because we're discontinuing it, so it's been reduced to 3 I'm using it in... Sounds like cheese. What's that? Blue Face Leicester. It does sound like cheese, but it's actually a sheep. Well, actually, okay, is there a cheese up, yeah. called Blue Face Leicester? There's a cheese called Red know. Leicester. I know. I was just saying it sounds And like there's cheese. blue cheese. But yes, I do hear you. It does sound a bit like cheese. Sorry, did I interrupt? <laughs> 
And then there's also uh, uh, the wild rose and the honey. That's what I'm using to make this particular colorway, but it comes in lots of colors. You, this is Aaron, okay? The tool that I'm going to show you that, uh, how to use that I'm using today is suitable for Aaron or Chunky. And Rico, who make the tool, actually supply it in some of uh, some new kits that are coming out using chunky wool. So I've never used it with chunky wool. I use it with Aaron, but it's very similar. So that's that. If you are doing this for the first time and you're a bit skeptical and wondering whether it's for you, I would urge you to use the larger tool and the thicker wool because what you're making will then grow faster and it will be much more, um, what's the word? Makes you feel good. You get the feel good factor from Instant doing it. Gratification. gratification. It'd be far more gratifying, that's the word. Thank you, Christopher. All right, so I'm going to talk to you. I'm just going to show you if we could uh, move over to the, the other shot, Chris. Sorry. I'm just going to talk to you about the front of this to start with. So, this is the right side of the cushion that I'm making. And you can see I've already done all of the pink polka dots here. And you can see that uh, they're slightly longer than where I've started to do the background of the of the honey colour here. And I'll show you that why that is when I when I turn it over and start explaining how to use the tool. But this is the right side of it. OK, now I'm going to turn it over. Bear with me like that. OK, am I in the right place for Instagram to show them this colour and this colour? Yeah. Yeah. OK, so this is the wrong side and I want to show you this. Actually, just come back to me a sec. I want to show you this because I want you to see it in, in its entirety and I want to talk about how I did this. I've used the large frame. I've cut a piece of monk's cloth, obviously, that's the size of the large frame. And then what I've done is I've taken the pattern out of the book at the back. So all the patterns are in the back, which is great. And I've cut the one out that I was going to use like this. OK, and then it sounds very complicated, but it really isn't. It was very straightforward. I actually just pinned this to the back of the monk's cloth and then I sh shone a light behind it so I could see the pattern. And then I literally just got my black marker pen and I copied the, the pattern. Now, I know this pattern's very straightforward. It's only polka dots. I could have drawn them myself, possibly, but I kind of wanted it to look like the one in the book. Um, and I wanted to try doing it from a pattern. There are lots of other patterns in this book. This is just one of them. Actually, there's another one on the back there. And I guess if you didn't want to actually pull it out and cut it, you could just trace over the patterns. But some of the other patterns, you probably wouldn't, you probably would need to use them. There's a tiger and a, and a, something else a leopard I think and then there's the more complicated spots as well so I've gone for something that's quite straightforward people keep asking me you know is this easy I'm not very good at knitting is this easy yes it is very very easy you just need to get uh, understand how to do it and get a few simple things right and then it's way way easier than knitting I would say I'd say it's probably faster and easier than some sorts of embroidery and cross stitch as well, because you are, once you get going, you are literally just stabbing the tool in and out. Okay, so let's get going. Let me talk to you a little bit about this tool. So if we switch back to the overhead again, Chris, please. So am I in the right place for Insta? I think I am. Let's go this way, just in case. So this is the tool that I'm using, all right? Now it comes with a threader. I'm gonna just get the threader out so that I can explain to you how this works. Okay, it comes with a threader because it's really difficult to get the yarn down the sort of shaft of it otherwise. And what you're doing is you're putting the, the threader up, okay, till it sticks out the top. You're putting the, the, the yarn through it and then you're pulling the, the needle threader down. So then it comes down the shaft of the needle and then I'm just gonna use this close up camera actually. Then what you're doing is you're, you're making sure that it's through this little hole here. Can you see the little hole? All right, so it, let me turn it around, you'll see it a bit better. So it goes down the shaft of the needle and then it goes out of this little hole at the back. So essentially the yarn is at the back of the needle here, okay? And then it comes all the way up to the top here, okay? Okay, back to the overhead please, Chris. So that's what it looks like now. The added interest on this particular tool, and I do sell two tools actually, this is the wooden one, which has got a fixed shaft at the top here, and that's it, that's the, that determines the length of the loop on the reverse. This tool that we sell 
is um, is quite interesting because you can alter the length of it. Okay, so at the moment I've got it set for D on D, but for the polka dots here I had it set on B, and that meant that they um, that meant that they came out of the, the, the on the right side longer loops. Okay, so I'll talk to you about that again before we finish. So going back to this on the D setting, you can see it's making the shaft shorter. And on the B, it's making it longer, all right? I'm gonna put it back to D, okay. So that's basically the setup of the tool. It's not very complicated, that's it. The wool goes down through the little hole at the back. And the wool should always be at the back when you're working on this now. Okay, let me just move into position. Oh, actually, back to me for a second, sorry. Now, I just wanna to talk to you about working situations and where you're gonna sit and do this what's most comfortable because if you're doing something as big as this it's quite unwieldy and it's quite um, difficult to sort of cope with if you're not if you haven't thought it through okay so what I tend to do just before I start if I'm working at a table like I am here in the studio I will sit a little bit further back I'm just going to demonstrate this to you I would sit a little bit further back and I would have the area I'm working on with nothing underneath it and the other end of it sitting on the table here, okay? Then what I'm doing is I'm punching through and there's nothing underneath. So that, that works really, really well for me, okay? Um, if I can't do that and I'm not sitting at a table, I would suggest trying to find an armchair. Like if you want to sit down and do this in the evenings and so that you're comfortable, I would suggest trying to find an armchair, okay, so that you can rest this on the two arms and you're sitting underneath it and hopefully it won't stab your thighs um, and you'll have an area under, underneath it which you can poke through the needle through into. Otherwise, what I'm actually going to do today is I'm going to rest the whole thing on the table like this uh, so that the area underneath it, obviously there's a bit of space underneath it, and then I'm going to punch through it like that. Okay. So there's a few alternatives there for you. Some people do this on a big frame and they attach it to a big frame that sits on the table so that they can stab into it. Um, and there are different frames that you can buy that will allow you to do that. But I do think using this wooden frame works really well because it's important to get this cloth taut. All right, so I'm just going to go back to the overhead for me for a sec, Chris. I want to talk to you about how I attach the monk's cloth to the frame and I'm just going to peel back my masking tape here and here at the side so I can show you my drawing pins. Oh, uh, Mrs. Show us your drawing pens. <laughs> right, okay. So what we've got here <laughs> is the monk's cloth, obviously I've cut it to the edge of the wooden frame. <clears throat> the thing about the monk's cloth, let me just show you this piece here, it will fray really, really easily. Okay, am I in the right place? Yes. So you've got to really get it held in place very, very securely with drawing pins. So all I've done here is I've pulled the monk's, monk's cloth taut and then I've just stuck my drawing pins in probably every couple of inches as I've gone round. And then what I've done is I've covered this over using some masking tape. I've just used some that I found that's Chris's in the drawer. That's oh. my expensive oh, is masking it? tape. Oh, is that's it? the masking tape that comes off again that's about £25,000 a roll. Right, okay. I'll put the bill in, shall I? Okay. <laughs> mm. So I would use masking tape or gaffer tape or sellotape, or you could... <laughs> I've been asking him to cut to me for a while now, but he was talking about his masking tape and he didn't notice. Um, you could use washi tape. I love washi tape. Why would anybody use washi tape? It will fall off. No, no, no. Washi tape is the same as masking tape. No, it's not. Washing... OK, I'm not entering into this argument right now, but washi tape, guys, back me up on this. It's the same as masking tape. But anyway, do you know what? Actually, if I had the choice of all the tapes, I'd use gaffer tape because it's really, really sticky and it would stick and it would stop it from fraying. Uh, but I couldn't find any, so I just used the masking tape, the very expensive masking tape that's blue. Anyway, <coughs> just make sure that your monk's cloth is really, really taut, okay, and it's held to, <coughs> sorry, frog in throat, it's held together really, really well, and that will get you off to a good start. <coughs> but it goes without saying that you can't stab with it just sitting like face down onto the table because you'll stab into the table. Your tool, 
will hit the table. So you do need to just prop it up. Okay, so back to back we go to the overhead shot. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I actually do this. But the first thing I would urge you to make sure is that you've got plenty of loose yarn wound off from your ball before you start, okay? The main reason for this not working is that the yarn cannot travel freely down the shaft of the needle. All right, so I'm just going to pull all this back through so that I've got myself in a right pickle here, look. There we go. So that it's like that, all right. So I haven't got any excess on this rear side, okay? And what I'm doing with this is I'm just traveling up and down now, filling in between my dots. But I just want to show you the basic process of the punch needle, okay? So I'm getting it really, really close to my fabric. I'm gonna lift it up. Am I in the right place, Chris? Uh, yeah. And then I'm aiming for the holes. Now, what I want to show you here is that I'm just going, I'm not lifting it up in the air in between inserting it into the holes, okay? And I am just aiming, if possible, for the gap. I'm probably missing them actually, because <laughs> I'm doing this live. But I'm aiming for the gap of the holes as it's a woven fabric, I'm aiming for the hole. But if you don't get the hole, it doesn't matter, it will still go in. Now, as you get into the, the hang, as you get the hang of this, you can start working a lot faster and you can move it along a lot quicker, okay? And this is it, this is all you do. All right. Now I've got to a, I've got to a polka dot here, so I'm actually just going to scoot over the polka dot with my yarn, and then I'm going to carry on the other side of the polka dot. Am I in the right place? Can you lift it up a bit? That way. Go. That way. Yeah. That way. There. And, and go to your uh, to your right side. My right. That way. Yeah. There. So you can see, I'm just, I'm just going to continue doing this for a few more, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to show you more to the right. that way, there, to the right. that way. Yeah. Am I going the right way or Just is it to your right. right there? Well, I have to wait for the delay to okay, all right, okay. All right, so that's basically it. If I had another hand, I would show you on the close-up camera, but I don't. Lift it up a bit if you could. Lift it up. Yeah. Up, that way. In the shot. There. Is that in the right place now for everybody? Well, now you need to go right. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, right, okay. So um, I'm now going to just turn this over, all right, and I'm going to show you the back of it, okay? So this is the bit that I've just punched through here, all right? And as I mentioned earlier, these are the areas which I've done on the longer setting. So when I did these bits, obviously using the pink wool, I had, let me just put it to that setting now just to show you because it was quite long. So it was actually sticking out that far, okay, which is obviously much longer and it's, it's giving me these different heights here. So when this is finished, these, these will stick proud. They're almost like little pom-poms, aren't they? Now, another little tip I've got for you, if you make a rogue loop somewhere, and this has happened a couple of times as I've been doing this, but I've actually remedied them, so I should have left one sticking out. But if you end up with a funny loop sticking out, just get an empty tool and stick it back through to the other side. That's the way to sort that out. Or if you've got one that you don't want that's in the way, you can just poke it back through. Because all you're doing here is you're poking wool through from one side to the other. I mean, that's all you're doing. Could you use a knitting needle or something rather than an empty tool, assuming that you don't have an empty tool? Um, yes, you could probably use like a very fine crochet hook or yeah, something pokey pokey, like a, a fat needle of some sort and just push it back through to the other side again. Um, but that's all you're doing here. We're just going through from one side to the other. That is, it's, it's not any more technical than that. You're just literally poking it through the monk's cloth and the monk's cloth every time you make that movement is grabbing it and holding it holding the loops in place okay so i just want to talk to you uh let me just put this back again to how it was um i just want to talk to you if you can go to the overhead again about how you then finish this off so here's one that i finished that was just in a, um, a little 
uh, embroidery hoop, that's the word. And you can see there's the back there. Now, to make sure that none of this comes undone, what you need to do is then just paint this with a fabric glue, okay? And this will hold it fast, and obviously once it's dry, there's less likelihood of these pulling out. Because basically what I could do if I wanted to do is just pull one of these away. And you can see, actually, let's, let me just do that. If I want to, can everyone, am I in the right place? Oh no, let me use this, look. If I want to, I can just literally pull this and these loops are coming out, okay? It's as easy as that. So what you need to make sure is that you don't ac accidentally catch it on something um, and accidentally pull out the loops as you're making them. But I would say the one reason why people struggle with the punch needle when they first do it is that, let me show you what might happen. So say you had your, your wool tightly wound like this, and say it was like caught on something, it was caught on your table leg or something, and therefore it wasn't able to go down the shaft of the needle. So you're punching away, punching happily away, thinking it's all working, and actually you get an inch further down and it just gives you one long piece of yarn and none of it's gone through. That's because it can't travel freely down the shaft. So just make sure all the time. So what I do is I just stop every few stitches and wind a, a bit more off. I mean, if you got really serious about it, you could probably put it on a spindle or a wool winder or something and have it unraveling as you're working and maybe feed it through a little wire thing or something. Um, if you're going to do something really huge and you want to make sure that that doesn't happen because it become, can become more time consuming and more annoying. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the amounts of wool you'll need. So obviously the longer the loops at the bottom, when I was using the pink, the more wool I was using. And I actually thought, I wasn't sure because the pattern was for chunky yarn and I was using Aran. I thought, oh, I'm sure I'll, one of these will be enough, a 50 gram ball, which I think is 83 meters. And actually it wasn't. I've used half, well, half third of another one as well because the loops were so long. So now my loops are shorter. Now I'm using this honey color. I'm hoping that I'm going to get away with maybe four of them, I'm thinking, because that's all I've used so far and I've done that much. So. I'm thinking four might do it, maybe, maybe going into five. And of course, this is, I'm just making the front of this cushion cover. I'm not doing it double-sided, which I think is in the pattern book, because obviously they want you to do something huge. Um, it is quite time consuming, but I have to say, I think it's probably quicker than, let me just go to the overhead while I'm talking, and I'll do a little bit more. I think it's probably quicker than um, you know, doing an, an actual embroidery. And also it's a little bit more mindless. <laughs> I mean, if you like to do things that are a little bit more mindless and not have to think about it too much, you know, there's not that much of a pattern going on here. I'm just going to try and get into a rhythm now. Now, the other thing that I really want to emphasize is that I've got the yarn behind me. I've got, have I already said this? I'm going crazy. Let's use this again. Um, where is it? Oh, there. <laughs> I've got the sliced off bit of the needle facing me and I've got the wool behind me, behind it, okay? So as I'm punching in to the fabric each time, I'm, I'm putting the whole length of it in, but that sliced off bit is facing forward, facing upwards, okay? If you want to go back to the overhead. Um, so let me just carry on. Oh, I've just dropped something on the floor. So as you get into the rhythm of this, you see, you can work quite quickly. And you, I'm not, re I'm going the full length of it in, but when I come out, I'm not going any higher. So I'm not, I'm trying not to make loops on the back here. I'm only making the loops on the front, okay? And you can see it's just forming a nice line here. Now, I've got to another polka dot here. So I'm just going to scoot right over that and then I'm going to carry on. So this saves messing about, you know, like cutting it, starting again, all the rest of it. I know it uses up a little bit more of the yarn, but hey, never mind. And then I'm literally just going to come back up the other way. Now, I, I've got to the point where this is starting to pull a little bit. So I'm just going to put it down. I'm going to unwind a little bit more of it. Okay. And then off I go again. 
and I'm just going to keep this quite uniform going up and down because I think that makes a difference to the front. So what I could do is I could go this way for this bit and then I could go this way for this bit. But I actually feel like doing it the way I'm doing it is giving me um, more even results on the front here. OK, so as as you can see, it's giving you can almost see the line that, that's created as I'm going up and down here. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. These have got a little bit bigger. You've Is that the bit I've just set wrong? Oh God, I have. Look, well there we go. Look, that's the length of the well spotted, Christopher. I'm glad you're here. That's the length of the loop. Look for the for the doodars. <laughs> Oh my goodness, sacked. All right, so what I'm going to do, oh no, this is good, this is good, because we can show everybody. So all we need to do, I need you to reset my out. tool. I'm going to I'm going to pull it out, there we go. So I'm just going to pull out, am I in the right place? All those bits that I've just lovingly done. <laughs> and you can see it's just showing a few holes here. Just run your fingernail over it and they close up again and it'll all be absolutely fine. So all I've got to do now to redo those with my tool on the correct setting. Actually, let me just check. Have I done the right number? I think I have now. Um, all I've got to do now, now I've got my tool on the correct setting, which is D, not B. Oh, that was good. That showed you the B setting. Ta -da! All right. So now let's go down again. Serendipity. Uh, there we go, it showed you something I wasn't going to show you. And then keep going, get into the rhythm. And I am just propping this up on the table. But you know. Can you move over to your right a bit? Still a bit more. See, that yeah, to me looks going, like it's not in the right going. place. There? A little bit more. There. Okay, all right, if trusting. you say so. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. Anyway, so now I'm doing it on the right setting. Let's go down to the bottom again. Right, has anyone got any questions that I haven't thought of or answered so far? Well, Lynn on Facebook, mm. yes, she was on the wrong setting. She was on <laughs> D. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's when you're in a live situation. It's a little bit more stressful. I mean, if I was at home doing it on my own, I probably would have noticed that. Oh, oopsie. Right, here's a Jax, little thing as well. Jax on Instagram says mm. she can't see what you're doing. Okay. Uh, All right. Let me just Jax, move. Jax, elaborate. Which bit can't you see? Let me move on to the other camera, maybe. It's difficult for me to hold the other camera. Can you come and hold it? No. Uh, I'd have to cut it and then come over and do it. Okay, let's do that. What? All right, cut to it now. Okay, hold on. Okay, he's coming. Hold on, everyone. Oh, my goodness. The enigma. He's moving. Oh, no. Is he attached to anything with wires? No, right. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go, everyone. Okay. All right, so I'm going into the little hole. And then I make sure it's in the center for Insta, because they'll only see a slice of this, won't they? There we go. All right. So each time I'm just aiming for the little hole in the, in the monk's cloth like so. And then I'm literally just going up and down and up and down and up and down. But what I wanted to say earlier when I only had one hand is that this little carved off bit, can you see the carved off bit? That needs to be uppermost and then the wool here is behind. So you've always got this wool behind where you're stabbing. Okay, all right, back to it matey. Where would you like me to cut to now? To me please. <laughs> Ta -da! Okay, so many cameras. It's so did you just show me on camera? You no, did, no, didn't no, you? Not at all. You did. I'm going to go back and review the tapes. <laughs> tapes, back in the olden days. Um, so, oh, sorry, I'm really hot. <laughs> oh, the sun's coming out now. So that is punch needle. That is it. And you're just going to keep going and keep going with this little one that I did. I wasn't going in any particular order or I mean some of them was going round and round and working to the middle and other bits I was filling in that way other bits I was filling in that way so it depends on the pattern that you're doing as to which direction you want to sort of punch in but because this is quite uniform and, and uh, repetitive now I've done all the polka dots actually do you know what the pattern actually told you to do it the other way around and I decided against that because I always know best 
but actually in hindsight I probably would have done it the other way around. But anyway, uh, the pattern said to do the background first and then fill in the polka dots and I was like no I want to do the polka dots first. So I think the only thing, the only difference that's made possibly is that my polka dots might be a bit bigger because I wasn't filling in a smaller space that had been left and I was like starting off with them but that's cool I quite like the polka dots. Um, but yeah, because it's quite a regulated, uh, re repetitive pattern, I really want this to just be quite straight up and down so that when it's finished, it has that kind of look to it. That sort of, and it looks neater. Yes, go ahead, caller. There's a number of questions coming okay. in. Questions, uh, go for it. I might just fan Facebook. myself with this. Nikki Herbert, is Monk's Cloth this the same as Ada, A-I-A-A. Oh, Ada. Yes, I do know what you mean by Ada. Um, yes and no. So I think the difference is that it's Ada isn't, isn't stretchy, OK? So it's still got all the little holes in it, and actually I think it would probably work. But because the monk's cloth has got a bit of stretch to it, it's it holds the the yarn better when you're working on it but they probably are quite similar I think you just need to double check which Ada you were using and how big the holes were because it comes in lots of different gauges or sizes or whatever you want to call it yes 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 uh, yes Claire HSG sorry I've got a runny nose Forgive on me. Instagram hello Claire uh, can you use any type of wool Absolutely, yes, Claire. It's only the weight of the wool that's important. So, yes, yeah, so it doesn't matter what, what um, when we say wool, we mean yarn, right? So it could be acrylic, it could be cotton, it could be wool. It doesn't matter. It just needs to be the right weight so that it travels down the shaft of the tool. So this is a five millimeter tool, this, this tool that I'm using and uh, therefore it's suitable for Aaron and Chunky. I just, I know you want to say something else, Chris, but I just want to quickly say, there's another tool set for narrower yarn, okay? So this one comes with three different sort of nib attachments, 1.3 mil, 1.6 mil, 2.2 mil. I know we're currently out of stock of this, got more coming next week. Um, so this is more suitable for sort of embroidery cottons and four ply maybe at a push but really really fine embroidery cotton so if you're going to do something maybe on a like a tote bag a cotton tote bag or maybe on a finer fabric like a linen or something it might be interesting to I haven't really if I'm honest I haven't really experimented with this because I like fast results using chunky yarn can you tell um, but yeah hopefully that's answered your question any sort of yarn will do yes I would just like to say, for no other reason than I had a little chuckle, that the Manchester Tart has joined on Instagram. Welcome, Manchester Tart. Uh, <laughs> you have amused my husband. And seriously, on Facebook, <laughs> yes. Emma Bayard, how do you end off when you have finished a colour? Good question. You just pull a length of it out and snip it off. Because it's no more, all of the stitches are held in the same way and, and really you're going to be really holding this all together when you glue the back, okay? So, I mean, you could tie a knot or tie it to another bit, but if it got caught, it would pull out just as easily because the other end of it is just poking through. So you could like weave in your ends if you wanted to, but there'd be an awful lot of them with all these polka dots. So I haven't done that. So, um... A question in from YouTube, oh, and yes. can I commend you, Christine Roy, for watching <laughs> on YouTube, because you can see what's going on. Well, so can everyone else. Oh, I what, know, more easily, but, uh, yeah. You can see everything that's going on. Yeah, it's, And it's, you could oh, click yes. and subscribe. <laughs> okay, gosh, yes, I know. Chris wants me to ask everyone to click and like and subscribe, isn't Whatever. It? Whatever the you phrase what is. I mean. Anyway, um, she did have a question. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do the Which question. is a very fine question from <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> where they can see what's happening. Could you punch on felt? Punch on felt, punch on felt. All right, so felt is a very dense fabric. 
and it's not very easy to do it through that no is the easy answer however i haven't tried using these very fine punch needle tools on felt i'm suspecting it's a no what what i do on felt is needle punching which is not punch needle it's needle um needle felting it's it's um so that's completely different. I don't know if you're confusing it with that, but needle felting is when you're uh, stabbing small bits of wool tops into felt, whereas punch needle is when you're stabbing the yarn through the fabric. Now, obviously the yarn's got to be open weave enough in order for you to get the nib through, okay? And this monk's cloth works brilliantly with this particular tool. With these finer tools, I'm just looking at the nibs. I mean, they're still, much bigger than a sewing needle. So I would imagine it's probably quite difficult. It's not something I'm really, I haven't, I think I have had a go once with not good results, but I might, I might try again with this set, maybe with the finest one, the 1 1.3. <coughs> it's not what it's designed for though. I haven't, I haven't seen anyone suggest that you do that. So yeah, go on, next question. Next question, Earth Queen Magic on Insta. Hi. Do you always have the underside cloth towards you when yes. working? Yes, absolutely. So this is the side that I've drawn my design onto using a marker pen. OK, so it's definitely the back um, and you're using the marker pen um, got, you know, outlines as a guide as to where you're going to punch. And then the other side is your right side, which is the side that you'll have facing out when you finish the cushion. OK, so the, all the time I was making this, I was working on this side, punch, 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 punch. And then this is the finished thing at the front. And it's like a carpet. It's lovely. It's like a, it's really like a carpet. That's the best way to describe the feel of the finished thing. It's like a pile of a carpet. Yes. So uh, Emma Bayard on Facebook again mm. is asking, can you use DK? Yes, you could use double knit. Oh, okay. Shame on you for not knowing what that is. All after all these weeks of, of, of what DK could be. After all these weeks of live tutorials, Christopher, you don't know what DK stands for. Yes, you can use DK. I mean, I I think, you know, like we said at the beginning, it's more gratifying if you use a slightly chunkier yarn because um, it builds up qu more quickly. It gives you a thicker pile on your carpet. But yeah, absolutely, I've used double knit. I definitely use this tool for double knit, Aaron and Chunky. Although it doesn't say double knit on its packet, yes, it would be absolutely fine. Um, yes, next. Uh, I, I would just to like to commend oh. Katie Cox <laughs> Hi, on, Katie. YouTube, you on YouTube, who has now subscribed. Oh, bless you. Thank Thanks you, Katie. For that, Katie. So basically, the reason Chris is harping on about YouTube is. We're a bit late to the party with YouTube, but basically it gives you a better picture. I don't know why. He could probably bore you for hours with why, with the videos, right. the video pixels or something. But it gives you a better picture, uh, and better quality, and better sound quality. Everything's Just saying, better. everything's better. And it's better. the right shape. Yeah, that's it. And it's the right shape. Even if you're on your phone, stop. You just turn stop, it stop, 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 stop. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so, oh, uh, sticking with YouTube. Yes, yes, go on. Uh, Anna. It's fine, you can watch it whenever you like. Could you show us, oh, excuse me. Yeah. Could you show us yes. how to glue the done cushion? I would how if I. How much glue do you use? Oh, okay. I haven't got any glue here, so I do apologise for that. No, What's I. That up there? Well, no, I've got the, 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 the gem tack. I mean, you would literally just you know put some on i would i would put some on and get a paintbrush and like dab it all over it doesn't need to be like a uh, half a um half an inch thick you just need a light coating of glue all over the back and actually we're getting some special punch needle glue i don't know that it particularly differs to any other sort of glue but we're getting another tub of uh, glue especially for this it's coming in next week um the other thing i would do is consider just uh, watering it down slightly to make it easier to brush on so if you've got a really thick gloopy glue then and I'd use a textile glue so maybe don't use a Pritt stick or a Yoohoo use a textile glue that is suitable for this so if you're going to use our let me just grab it gem tack which I harp on about all the time this is our usual textile glue we use for everything I'd maybe I mean 
I would maybe water this down a tiny bit. So get some in a little dish and maybe just add a few drops of water so it's liquid enough to just paint on the back using a paintbrush. That's what I would do with the glue. Leave that to dry. You can also do the edges as well. So to stop the edges from fraying, you could, you could do that once you've taken the masking tape off, glue the edges as well. And then obviously what I'll be doing is I'm going to be sewing this to another piece of fabric to make the cushion. Yes, next question. Um, oh. Uh, Lily <coughs> Ambrosino. Yes. From Italy. Yes. There was a clue. Are you watching in Italy? That's amazing. Hi. Okay. I'm Hi. from Italy. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Hello. Where I can, where can I find the book you show? Oh, we sell it. We sell all of this and we ship worldwide. So we can ship it to you. So, oh, I was going to show you the other books as well, actually. So they've done three so far in this series. Actually, do you know what? Being honest here, they're all really lovely. They've, um, they've got a whole... Actually, do you want to go to the overhead and then I can show what's in each one? There you go. Okay, am I in the right place? Oh, there? No. There? Uh -huh. So this is book one. You can see it's got cushion. Now this is a bag using the finer tool and then it's got a little wall hanging. It's got another cushion here. So that's that one. That was their first book. This is their second book called Bunny Hop. I'll show you all the projects on the back. Wall hangings, again another little bag, um, little cushions here with bunnies. There's a bunny theme and a sheep there running through that one. And then this is the one that I'm using, okay, which has got various things like um, the leopards and the tiger, cushions, wall hangings, and then other cushions. Actually, the one I'm doing isn't actually featured on the back. But let me just quickly show you here. Yeah, so that's the one I'm doing here. But there's also this animal print one as well, which is quite nice. But I thought I'd just keep it simple. So just doing that for the make along. But yes, uh, basically we sell these. Back to me, Chris. We sell these on our website and um, we sell all of the different sizes of the frame. We sell the yarn, obviously. We sell the tool, okay. I know we're a bit low on the monk's cloth, but I've got more coming next week. We sell it in cream and in a very pale powdery pink. Uh, we sell the other tool as well. And yeah, and we sell the drawing pins. And then next week we'll have the glue as well. I know I've mistimed this all a little bit. It's um, a lot of it's coming back next week, the stuff that's out of stock. But um, yeah, so we ship worldwide so we can get it to you. Um, unfortunately, yes. Instagram has just stop sending me messages oh okay so if you're asking questions on instagram oh if you're answering questions on instagram we can't see I them can't i'll see ask them, them the afterwards moment. you'll answer i them think afterwards. instagram had an update this week because it's introduced reels and it's done a massive update so maybe it's having a bit of a moment I don't but know. obviously if you were on youtube <laughs> yes, I could okay. see it perfectly any more questions answered. any more questions uh, i did recall a question before it did crash oh, about okay amazing uh, you could just draw anything onto monk's cross yeah you don't yeah need yeah to no you don't need a pattern. pattern i mean that's all i did here okay i just got a pen and just yes i mean if you're confident enough to do that where's my pen gone i don't know i've lost it oh maybe that's what fell on the floor uh, but yes if you've got a pen black marker pen any marker pen just do your, or draw it on paper first maybe and then transfer it. But yeah, just draw anything. I mean, And if you have yes. got an urgent question and you're stuck on Instagram and yes, you need okay. Jillian to answer, just put it in again quickly because I can't see it. Okay. Oh, I couldn't see it. Anymore. Are there any more outstanding questions? Because we need to finish. It's nearly quarter yeah, two. Yeah, no, I think, so, I think that's it at the moment. So if you do have any more questions, just, just add them uh, and I'll answer them by typing not speaking. If that's okay. Oh, we're taking a couple of weeks off. We've been doing live tutorials now uh, on here every week, apart from one week, I think, um, since March, and now it's August. Uh, so we're we're having a couple of weeks. Oh no, there's another question. Is there? Uh, yes. Quick, quick, Dennis quick. Clark, yes. Can you use yes. embroidery thread, thread on monk's cloth? Yes with the smaller tool? Yes, you can, okay. yes. Okay. I think that's what they're saying. So they're saying with the smaller tool. So I'm not very experienced with the smaller tool, um, but yes, and I think, um, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, definitely. But, but I think the beauty of the smaller tool is that you can also work into a tighter weave fabric as well. Like a, you could actually put it onto cotton, you know, 
Um, it needs to have a bit of an open weave to it, unlike felt, but so you can go into a, a cotton with it. Yeah, so we're taking a couple of weeks off, maybe two, maybe three, I haven't decided yet, but then I will put a schedule up of what's coming next at some point via our newsletter. If you don't subscribe to our newsletter, please do. That's where I send out most information, but I'll also put it onto Facebook and Instagram uh, as to what we'll be doing next. I've got lots in the pipeline. So thank you for tuning in. So I've got next weekend off, Master. Yes, yes thank you, you do. Master. <laughs> thank you, Master. Um, so I've got lots in the pipeline and I will get back to you uh, via all those, via all those um, different platforms when I when I'm now and I'll tell you what's coming next. But thanks for tuning in and see you all soon. Have a lovely warm day. Cheery bye. bye.